Some words from Psalm 34, the psalm set for All Saints' Day. I will never stop thanking God with constant words of praise. My soul will boast of God. The poor will hear me and be glad. Join me in praising the Lord. Together, tell of God's name. I asked and the Lord responded, freed me from all my fears. Turn to God, be bright with joy. You shall never be let down. I begged and God heard, took my burdens from me. God's angel defends the faithful, guards them on every side. Drink in the richness of God. Enjoy the strength of the Lord. Live in awe of God, you saints. You will want for nothing. I'm Nicholas Henshaw, I'm the Dean of Chelmsford, and these are my reflections for All Saints Sunday, All Saints Day. And that's one of the readings that's appointed for today, Psalm 34, a great psalm of rejoicing. And this is the gospel that's traditionally been read on All Saints Day, and uh, we'll be looking at this a little bit. It's Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will receive God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. They're very very well known, very famous words of Jesus, the very first teaching of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel. And let's have that in the back of them, back of our mind on this All Saints Day. Uh, but let me note one thing about that reading. We call it the Sermon on the Mount, or at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, which is kind of really misleading because it's not a sermon, it's training for discipleship. This is addressed very explicitly to the inner ring of disciples, not to the crowds. I'm afraid all those films which have Jesus preaching to vast crowds on the mountaintop, that's not what's happening in Matthew's Gospel. This is training for discipleship. Like so many of the passages of teaching in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is talking to the inner ring, those he's going to send out to be proclaimers that the kingdom of God has come very close. And therefore I'd want to suggest it's Jesus talking to us as followers today. 
called this reflection No More Heroes Anymore. No More Heroes Anymore sang The Stranglers back in 1977, I remember. I was first year sixth, I think, at the time. They caught something of the zeitgeist of the times. And of course they turned out, well, to be right, no more heroes anymore. Heroes, as we have found to our cost as churches and communities, almost always turn out to have clay feet. The recent revelations about characters such as Bill Hybels and Jean Vanier suggests that the churches should know about this already. Our investment in heroes as a kind of celebrity ends up ringing very hollow indeed, an echo of our own desire for significance. Which for me, I want to suggest, is a big invitation to rethink All Saints Day, and indeed the word saint itself. What does it mean in Christianity? What does it still mean in popular culture? Well, for most people, I'd suggest it conjures up the stained glass window version of an unreal human being wrapped in mystical prayer and doing some very unusual things. For 10 years, I was vicar of St. Margaret's Church in West Newcastle. Now, even the early Christians knew that St. Margaret was mythical. There was no ancient tradition whatsoever. And the only striking thing about her legend was that she had been swallowed by a dragon and escaped by making the sign of the cross. Imagine preaching on that for 10 years on St Margaret's Day. I need not move on to the more famously named St Christopher the Dog-Headed. You get the point. The real problem is with our idea of saints. It's completely contrary to what the New Testament means by saints. Now first of all the New Testament always and only <coughs> uses the word saint in the plural. It's always corporate about the body of Christ. It's never about the individual, uh, and that shouldn't be surprising given the biblical languages have no word or concept for the word individual. And even in English, the word is only found of a person from the 17th century onwards, not a concept in the biblical story whatsoever. The Bible is always corporate. It's always about us rather than about me. It's a real shame that in modern English we don't distinguish between you singular and you plural. Uh, most European languages do. But as a result in English it's very easy to, to assume that the words of Jesus and the writings of Paul are addressed to me when in fact they're almost invariably addressed to us, the corporate body of the church. And secondly, the New Testament always and only uses the words saints to refer to you and me, to refer to the people of God as we gather for worship and are sent out to serve. Not as, not as peculiar people with strange mystical visions, no, but as you and me, just followers of Jesus. That's why Paul addresses so many of his letters to the saints of God in the church of so-and-so. So far as the New Testament is concerned, being a saint is simply being a Christian. Uh, and we don't always make that very clear in the language that we use. So what does this mean for us on this All Saints Day? Well, All Saints turns out to be a powerful invitation to think about who we are as followers of Jesus today, to reflect on our corporate life as Christian communities, and to consider personally how we are responding in our daily lives to the joy simplicity and mercy of the good news of Jesus Christ. No more heroes anymore, sang the Stranglers. Well, no more heroes anymore to whom we can pass the buck, long ago and far away and so much better than it is today. No, no, the responsibility is ours in the here and now, it is ours to do justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. And I'm going to finish with what I think is one of the most beautiful modern prayers for All Saints Day, written specifically in response to the readings for today, and above all to those words we heard earlier, the sermon, sorry, the instructions for discipleship that Jesus delivers in Matthew chapter 5. All holy God, you call your people to holiness. As we keep the festival of your saints, give us their meekness and poverty of spirit a thirst for righteousness and purity of heart. May we share with them the richness of your kingdom 
and be clothed in the glory that you bestow. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen.